Radio technology is used in several forms such as broadcasting, communication, and wireless networks. The radio we built at the University of Utah is no different than the digitalized radios made today, except ours do not require any external power source. Crystal radio uses the energy of the radio waves sent by radio transmitters. Radio transmitters usually send tremendous amount of energy which becomes really faint by the time it reaches our crystal radio. Although the amount of energy is very small, the amazing capability of the human ear helps us to detect the faintest of sounds and we are able to hear the signal without any batteries or external power. Now let's see how the crystal radio circuit looks like. Since we are building a simple crystal radio, we need a magnetic wire, germanium diode and an antenna. Coil is the most important part of this radio since we require the coiling to produce the magnetic field. Our primary objective is to make the circuit resonate so that we can receive the signal from the air. Coil is our inductor, whereas the capacitance of our antenna is reacting with the inductance of the coil to resonate at the frequency of the radio station. Germanium diode is required to convert the signal from AC to DC so that we could connect our earpiece or speakers. We will also see hooks or taps on the coil which are basically made to change the resonating frequency so that we can switch to different stations. Hi, my name is Roy Patek, I'm a student at the University of Utah, and today I'll be talking about radios. Well, radio communication is a very important part of day-to-day -day life. We, we use radio everywhere in our cars, houses, but can we come up with a radio which does not require an external power source? Well, Crystal Radio is a uh, you know, radio which we made at the University of Utah, which detects the signals from the radio transmitters, and through amazing capability of human ears, which you know records the well, which which can hear the faintest of sounds, can enable us to hear the signal. Well, uh, first we'll go over how the crystal radio is built, and then we'll see how it works. Well, before we go ahead, let's kind of backtrack on how the uh, the crystal radio generates or receives power. Well, as I said before, the radio transmitter generates a lot of power or energy. But by the time it reaches the radio or us, it becomes really, really faint, probably one billionth of a watt. And in these circumstances, you need a circuit which can amplify this sort of a signal. And therefore, we have crystal radio. Now, how does it, you know, receives or how does it generate power? Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you hit a bell through a panel. Now, and it makes the bell ring. Now the hammer produces the mechanical impulse and then we can hear the bell. Similarly, we need to resonate the uh, circuit, we need to make the circuit resonate so that we can you know, convert the noise into some sort of you know, audible signal. And therefore we have this coiling all over this uh, cylindrical base and we have the, num the more number of coils, the more power it will generate and uh, more you know audible our signal will be. The germanium diode is basic diode is basically used to uh, convert the AC signal to DC. Without that, you won't be able to plug in your speaker or earphone, and therefore the signal won't be as you know nicely heard as it should be. And uh, you know after that, if uh, everything is put together nicely, uh, we should be ready to get some good signal out of this. Well, uh, enough of talking now, and uh, I'm really excited to test this radio, so let's see if we're getting uh, any radio station. Let's go to a break here on the night side, buddy. Well, uh, it works, and uh, which is great. Uh, if you were wondering uh, what are these uh, hooks on all over the uh, crystal radio, well, these are the points where we get different resonating frequency. So if we connect uh, a wire uh, on you know, different hooks, we'll get a different station. And since it's a crystal radio, it has its limitations and maybe you won't get as many you know, radio stations you get in your car stereo, maybe at a, you know, a home radio, but um, you will get at least two to three different channels on this uh, crystal radio. And uh, like any other radio communication device, we need an antenna. So antenna is just a wire which is connected 
and uh, usually the longer the antenna the better the signal you'll receive but uh, you know 20 feet wire which we connected it's just the external antenna uh, should be fine to receive signal so um, let's try out uh, if we can get some different stations out of this crystal radio that's one And uh, there's there's a convolution of two different signals, which you know might not be clear at this point of time, but uh, but yeah, I think two uh, radio stations are distinctly uh, heard at this time. So this is pretty much the. Uh, Crystal radio, if you build any, uh, enjoy and you know, see if you can get more than two radio stations on yours. Well, uh, I hope you had a great time. Uh, just in case you were wondering why exactly we should know about crystal radio. Well, crystal radio teaches us a lot about how um, you know, radio communication works and how it used to work in olden days. And therefore, it's a fun, easy way to learn about uh, you know, wireless communication. Um, I hope you had a great time and if you need more information you can log on to www.ec.utah.edu. Uh, this is Roy Patek signing off.